Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about what we are doing in 23 to march into 24, setting ourselves up to create the year we want in 2024. So super excited to be here with you today. If you're watching this for the first time, hi, my name is Rashida and I talk about life here. I talk about career breaks because I took one, talk about Mexico City because I live here, I talk about moving to Mexico because I did, that kind of stuff. Um, and then every once in a while we have a video like this where we're just kind of talking about life as it is and maybe the gap between life as we want it to be. So, so happy to have you here. I see a lot of members of my membership here right now. So I want to say good morning to you guys. Aileen, Glass Half Full, Go Shan, Sarah Wright, Abba, Jade. Good morning to you guys and to all of my regular viewers and anyone watching on the replay. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, let's talk about what we want to do in 2024 to wrap it up, call it over and start, or 2023, to wrap up 2023, call it over and start 2024 off right. Now, I mentioned this a while ago. I have decided, I decided this year that my new year starts in October. So I've already been doing these things because I can't wait till January. I have a very big event, as most of you guys know, in October. And so it just feels like I, coming off of that event, I have so many ideas and things I want to do, but it doesn't really feel like a year end. It feels like a year beginning. So I have made it my new year beginning. So my 2024 started like the middle of October. We'll call it all of October. That third, what you would see on the calendar as the third quarter of 2023 is my first quarter of 2024. Let's get this. Okay. So I'm going to go down my list of things that you should be thinking about in 2023, as we move into 2024. And if you have anything that comes up to you, but you think people should be thinking about as well, drop it in the comments. You know, I love a group project. So let's consider this one a group project as well. Very happy to get your input on this because we all do things differently. And I'd love to know what you guys are thinking about. So first on my list, um, actually, let me back up a second. Let me tell you why I'm thinking about this, why this came up to me today. Yesterday, we had a group coaching session from Burnout to Bliss, which is the Move Abroad and Career Break program I run. And yesterday was was an amazing one. Like I know a lot of them are like really, I'm gonna say a lot of them are really good. Um, and not just because I'm a great coach, but also because the women who come to these sessions hold space for each other so beautifully that it's not something I see in a lot of other spaces. Yesterday, what happened is a lot of women, um, we have an accountability, like we have a larger accountability group, a Facebook group. People can talk about what they want to talk about there and get accountability there. Abba was there. She said it was great. It was a really, it was one of our best ones. It was top five. <laughs> the yesterday session was a top five, definitely. Um, and I've been doing this program for years. Um, but also in yesterday's session, we so many women individually talked about what they wanted or what they needed and found an uh, accountability buddy within the group. So now someone that between this month and next month, when we do our next coaching session, they have someone holding them accountable about some of the things we're going to talk about on this list. And what really moved me was that there was more than any other session I think I've hosted. There were so many women who had quit their, like, quit their job this week. We had one woman uh, who's get on a plane to Africa tomorrow. <laughs> One woman who is going to Panama this week for her permanent move this week. So it was, um, it was such a beautiful experience to talk to different women who are in the midst of moving. So many women who had picked their, the date that they wanted to use, like their anchor date for when they're going to move. And there were so many changes happening that I didn't even know we're happening now. Like I knew these women were making moves, but I didn't know they were all happening like right now. It was just a beautiful thing to see. And so I was like, okay, so for the rest of it, aren't in my program yet. What are the things we can talk about today that might get you closer to the thing you want next year? Because yesterday I talked to a whole bunch of women who are closer to what they want. And whether you are in my program from Burnout to Bliss, from burnouttobliss.co, whether you're in the program or not, I want you to get closer to what it is you want for your life. So we're talking about today. All right. Shauna says, it's a great program. I used it and got to Mexico within six months. 
Let me drop the link. Okay, from burnout to bliss.co, we don't play around. We make moves. Okay, but that's not what we're talking about today. But I had to talk about it, right? Like I'm on YouTube is what I do. All right. Um, first on the list of how we're going to wrap up 2023. Oh my God, do you have a pen and some paper? Do you have a pen or a notebook? Something you can type on, something? Because I think we're going to take notes today. You don't take all the notes. Just take the ones applicable to you. I have a business partner. You may be familiar with her. Her name is Stephanie Perry. She called me out this week about not taking notes. Well, this astrology page called Taurus is out about not taking notes, about not writing things down. And she felt the need to tell me that I needed, yes, I needed to write more things down. I didn't like that. I don't like feeling called out. Do I need to? Probably. Did I need to hear that from her? No. Morning, Angela. Morning, Brittany. I didn't need to hear that from her. It was very rude. But anyhow, she said, write things down. In all, ca in all caps, in my DMs. Ew. So... You know, write, if you're a note taker, write things. She's the note taker. <laughs> Tweet us. And I'm the vibe absorber. This is important, though. So don't just absorb vibes. Also write things down. I'm telling y'all, she takes notes and then she loses the notes. But shh, don't tell her I told you. Shh. Okay. Shh. All right. Pen and paper. Let's do this. Evelyn's coming to us from Panama. Uh, hi, Samira. All right. First thing on the list. What is... What did you plan on doing this year that you didn't do that you still care about, right? I got a ton of stuff on my list that I planned on doing, and then I decided, like, nah, I really don't. <laughs> That's not for me. I switched some things around. I'm not doing that. And when I, when I talk about this list, I want you to create a list that feels good, right, at the end of this session, a list that feels good, not a list that feels heavy, a list that feels like ease, right? So like if you wanted to build a shed by hand and that doesn't feel like ease, maybe leave it off the list, right? Do you really want to build the shed or do you want to live in the shed? Do you want to build the shed or do you not want to pay for labor for the shell for the shed to get built? If it doesn't feel like ease, let it go. Let it go. All right. So what are the things that are incomplete from this year that you still care about? Um, for me, I can't think of anything that's incomplete. There are things that I wanted. Oh, no, there is one specific thing that uh, that is incomplete, but that's like a, it'll take me like 20 minutes to finish it, but I've been putting off at 20 minutes for two years. Let me write this on my list. I'm going to write this down that I'm finishing that this year. So it's not hanging over my head in 2024. Finish, you know what it is? You know what I'm about to say? Finish editing. I gotta edit something, Ed edit a video. You hear me type in and sign. I'm very upset about this, but it's two years, a year. It's old. I had to do it in 2022. I didn't do it in 2023. I'm not bringing it into 2024. So I'm going to finish this. Um, and tell me in the comments what your things are. Okay. I see Aileen Brown and I want to talk about Aileen's for a second. She says to take a one year sabbatical. I only did three months. Three months is amazing. Like, yes, you may have had a goal for one month, but a three month sabbatical ch can change your life. So I'm very, very happy that you did that. Very happy. Hold on, I'm looking for something real quick. But my desk is just a chaos factory. I thought I had something. Ah, here it is. Someone mentioned my lipstick. I always do this when I'm wearing something that's black owned. This is 
Oh, it matches. Ew. This is probably where I put the necklace on. I put it on like after I put it on lipstick. Uh, I didn't even think about it. Ami Coles. Ami Cole. I got it at, at Sephora. The color is smitten. Nope, y'all not going to see that. Nope. Nope. But trust me, the color is smitten. <laughs> um, and I really like this one. With like a light brown liner around, you know. But it's this. A lip oil. If you ask me about it and it's black owned, I'm going to tell you on video. Even if it's not, I might still tell you. But I make sure to have it on me. But it's black owned. All right. Let's talk about what y'all talking about. All right. So yeah, three month sabbatical is amazing. You should be very proud of yourself. Um, Samira's goal, what was incomplete, is to increase business income. No, okay. I need to step back real quick because y'all Black women are doing the Black woman thing. I don't know if it's for sure about Samira, but I'm going to guess this because it's, it's true about Aileen. You did a thing, but you could have done more of a thing. So in your mind, it doesn't really count as doing the thing. But it does. You did a thing. Samira, I know you increased your business income over 2022 and 2023. I just know it. My brain says it happened. My brain tells me, without knowing any facts or figures, that your business was more successful in 2023 than it was in 2022. You ran a summit. And like, even if you did not make more money, you created a pathway to more money. So everybody in the comments, give yourself a pat on the back for the things that like may not have been done the way you wanted them to or to the extent you wanted, but you still did a thing, right? Aileen, you took a sabbatical. That's huge. Most people never do that in their life. Like you're one in a million. Mm. Okay, wait, let's see. Tori's giving us the quote from her vision board. Uh, I no longer force things. What flows, flows. What crashes, crashes. I only have a space and the energy for the things that are meant for me. I'm not going to write that down as a note. I'm going to screenshot this because that's what I do. And then I lose my screenshots, but that's not your business. That's my business. That is my business, but I really like that. I work. I think it worked. Okay. I really like that. Thank you for sharing that, Tori. Um, all right. Shonda has her list. I got accepted into language school in Paris 2024. Ew. She's applying for her French. Oh, wait. This is your list of things you're working on that are incomplete or are they things that got completed. Because I think accepted into language school sounds completed to me. Applying for your French visa in February, in February 2024, working on two certificates, sabbatical the first three to six months while in Paris. Shonda's leaving us for Paris. She's in Mexico City. She's leaving us for Paris. Boo, but very, very happy for you. Very happy for you. Now, Shonda, I want Shonda to be a lesson to some of you guys, to be not a lesson, like a shining example. She wanted to move to Mexico. She moved to Mexico. She wants to spend time in Paris. She's going to Paris. Just making it happen. Just making choices and make, and then taking the steps to make it happen. Very proud of you. Um, okay. Auntie Lou says, one of the things that was incomplete in 2023 is not not being deep in my creativity it really makes a difference in my mental health. In 2024, I'm reclaiming my gifts. So I know that our good friend Brittany Joy on this, who's here right now in the live, is doing a creative play workshop in January of 2024. And she probably doesn't have a link yet because she's hard-headed and don't listen. But she should by next week, have a link for us 
so that we can join a creative play moment. Um, and she says, we're not going to need any cra any like supplies that we normally have in our house. So if like Auntie Lou and like I, you want to increase your creativity. I don't do a lot of like really creative things that are not like this. I don't, I got color on the iPad, right? Um, but I haven't done that in a while either. Uh, but yeah, if you want to do more of that, look next week, Brittany Joy will be sharing her info about her workshop. Won't you, Brittany? All right. Uh, Amy here uh, from Austin, Texas. She's moving to Mexico City in 2024. Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? This. See? Like, so when you say, and I, I told you, I knew these, I know these things. I know these things. Samira said her incomplete goal was to make more money in 2023. Increase business income. Incomplete, increase business income. But she had increased her business income. So she she hit her goal. If a goal was to increase business, I don't know if it was goal was the exact number or if a goal was to increase. If the goal was to increase, you increased. Give yourself a pat on the back. Don't make me take credit. I did nothing towards this, but I will take credit for it if you won't. Don't play this game with yourself. You did a thing. It counts. All right. Brittany Joy says incomplete task, task, finding a therapist. So I would ask Brittany, and for all of you with an incomplete task, what are you going to do next year or before the end of this year to make sure this is not an incomplete task at the end of 2024? How is your plan of attack going to be different? What are the steps you're going to do that you did not do this year to do the thing you want to do, right? So if it's incomplete, can you sit down and look at why it's incomplete and what you could have done differently to add a little bit more completion to the project? All right, Jade, 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 now you know. I know you're mad, so I'm not even gonna, gonna light any more fires underneath you. But next time you plan a scouting trip, it's gonna be solo, ain't it? Or if someone who's, you're in the same place at the same time, but your plans are not dependent on each other. Hmm. Class half full's daily affirmation is in July, I'll be working at a remote job of my choice, which leads to the question, what are you doing to make that your to make that goal happen? How are you taking action towards your goal? Right? Tree Serena says entrepreneurship and moving to a domicile state. I assume you mean a state where you won't have to pay um, income taxes. We talked about that yesterday in group coaching. Sometimes you don't need to actually move. Like if you if you plan on continuing to live in the United States, yes, you have to actually move. But if you plan on moving abroad, what does a move look like? Who what what do the states consider a move? Right? We walked through some of that yesterday. In from burnout to bliss. Co. Um, yeah, it's a good choice. But before you leave, it's great to live in a state that does not charge you inc uh, state income taxes because. Baby. All right. Ooh, Jade is taking Mexican Spanish lessons online. I love that. Because you're gonna move to Mexico and you wanna be fluent. All right. Let's see. Global Granny is um coming, going to Colombia for language immersion. I hope your daughter's doing much better, Anita. Hey, Aspen. That's what I'm talking about. Look at Jolana. 
I had a goal to save 15000 and quit my job, but I saved 20000 and I decided to use that to pay off student loans and move out before the 2024 elections. Yes. Yes. All right. Now let's save up a little bit more money so that when you move abroad, you have some money saved. Yes. I love it. Okay. Aspen, bring it back to the same thing again. Your incomplete task was saving money to move abroad. What? And now I know. I know. Sometimes when we're planning big things, we're frequently derailed. But what are the things you can do this year before the year is over and before and during next year to make sure that you can make your move in 2025, if not 2024, right? We're going to talk about money in a minute. Let me get through these comments first. We're going to get back to money. Uh, Jade, incomplete task, emptying out my storage unit and giving away things to my family. Maybe five years. It took me five years. So pick a date, right? Like I had to actually just pick a date and plan to go there and make it happen. And then it happened. That was what I needed to do. What do you need to do to make this happen? Mm -hmm. All right. Told her I'll be taking credit. <laughs> The next, so Stephanie and I run the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge. Child, where's that link? Oh, no. Exodusummit.com slash next three. Or something that sounds a lot like that. Let me see if I was right. Um, and in that challenge, we help. Oh, no. Ignore everything I said because we don't share that link publicly. You got to be in the Facebook group to <laughs> get that. La, 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 la. Any hoodle. Um, we, in that challenge, we help women get more clients to increase their business income. She didn't hit the number of it, business income number she wanted, but she increased it. Ew, 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 ew. Kathy Hampton, didn't finish any writing or publishing goals. Well, what did you do? Because I know you did some things. You plan a retreats and stuff. You're a retreat planner now. I guess in looking at this, for someone um, like Kathy, I would say, did you switch goals in the beginning of the year or were those your goals the whole year? Right? Did other things come in, come that took priority over those goals? Because if so, is it incomplete or was it like changed up a little bit? I don't know. All right. Um, Monica can sell her condo. All right. MJ submitted a story for an anthology that we published in 2024. Yay. Her story was accepted. We haven't written a full book. While y'all talk, we don't pat ourselves on the back. All right. Okay. I did this wrong. I blame me. This is absolutely my fault. What I should have started with, and I'm going to start with now, we're going to start over from the top. Everybody, everybody here. I can see that I can see who's here. So I know how many comments I'm expecting to see. Tell us one thing you did this year. One thing you did. It didn't have to be big. Maybe you drank your water, right? Maybe you minded your business, whatever it is. Write one thing in the comments that you did this year while I drink my water. And mind your business. Come on, tell us. Right, because a lot of y'all, I know, I know the point was what's incomplete, but I feel like some of y'all are talking about what's incomplete in a way that doesn't really give you credit for the stuff you did complete. And I want to start there. What is complete? What did you do this year? Let me know in the comments. I, I can see y'all. I know you're here. Some people left when I said that. When I said I can see who's here, some of y'all left. Ew, 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 ew. Ooh, 
Quitting jobs. Yes, you don't even like that job anyway, girl. All right. Completed. Pay, paid off all debt, Miranda. Oh, in motion. Paying off your house. Okay, you paid off all debt, I'm guessing, except for your home. All right. Francis got her residency approved in Mex in the U.S. side for Mexico. Yay. It won't get to Mexico until February, but yay. Wait, is that within the window, Francis? Because I don't know when you got the Mexican side approved. I hope it is. Look at this. I worked as a content consultant on a family memory book. I co-wrote that book. Yes, you did. You co-wrote a book. Um, we should talk more about that family memory book. That's very, I'm very interested in that. I'm very interested in that. Mod Child is perfecting her Wolof. temporary residency in Mexico. Look at this. Cassandra completed her estate plan. Y'all are doing things that you're not giving yourself uh, credit for. I'm taking credit for this one. Should I? That's not the point. Would she give me credit? That's not the point. I'm claiming this and putting it in my pocket. Still on my sabbatical since September 2022. I'm not done chilling just yet. Yes. Yes. Brown Girls Travel 2 started a YouTube channel. Aspen went to Japan. She didn't just travel outside of North America. She went all the way to Japan and was there in the streets. Taking photos and being photographed. Making big moves. Big moves. It's one of my favorite ones. Made a decision. If you know me <laughs> and you know how much I'm hyping up this particular decision, you know what decision it was. Shh, don't tell nobody. Okay, Aileen took a three month sabbatical. Jamila got a promotion. Yes. Uh, Anya attended the Exodus Summit and moved to Portugal Summit. Yes, we are doing things. Nisha quit her job and started her six month sabbatical. Doing things. Doing things. All right. Y'all are in the comments telling us what you did. I'm very, very proud of you. Very proud of you. Eleanor took her first international trip since Paris. Brittany Joy launched her art business. Yes, yes, yes. Kathy planned two retreats, executed one, leaving the U.S. January 2024. Yes. Ebony Wynn quit her job at 30th November instead of last year. Yes, yes, yes. CC switched jobs, making more money. Y'all are doing things. Chloe did a Europe trip to four countries. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Y'all was doing stuff. Look at this. Scroll through these comments. Your sister friends are doing things. You are doing things. Yes, Genesis said I can get the credit. Mm, 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 mm. All right. Yes, y'all are doing things. Alicia renewed her Mexican residency for three years. Ew. Jams in Bonaire on a scouting trip. Bonaire on a scout. You gonna move to Bonaire, girl? You thinking about it? Look at you down there in the ABCs. Let me let me slide through. Pray, travel, eat. What are we talking about, girl? I don't know. We just talking. It's fine. Where are you? Are you back? Are you? Anyhow. Okay, Monica, we go on transition into money because Monica said so. And let me tell you what she said. Monica said she got promoted, saved and invested a lot, and got $78,000 in student loans forgiven. Monica said it's time to talk about the money. I don't know if y'all heard it, but that was what we, what, uh, what's underneath that. Monica said, time to talk about the money. So number two on my list, we're talking about money. We talk, congratulations, Monica. We're talking about money. Okay. The first thing on my list about money <laughs> is um, 
how do you want to allocate your money this year? Have you thought, there's a lot of formulas online about like how much money should be put towards this and how much money should be put towards that. I talked about this on Instagram the other day. You really got to figure out what works for yourself, right? Now, if 90% of your money is spent on, on like cocaine, maybe you do need to listen to other people's advice. Maybe you do need to think about some, what some other people are talking about, right? Um, if you know, if you live in that life, it's maybe. But if you seem to have a healthy balance, maybe look at what other people are doing um, and take some guidance. Not necessarily following the whole thing. I think we can get in a lot of trouble with ourselves financially when we are taking advice and not tailoring it for ourselves. Like I can't take general advice about how much money should be spent on rent versus how much should be spent on vacation because y'all don't know my life. I'm not going to spend a lot on rent, but I'm going to blow everybody's bag on vacation. Ask Stephanie about me. <laughs> Woo, we both got each other into trips this year, but are so like so ridiculous. But yeah, we okay, we committed. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yes, I bought a ticket to Fiji. Yes, it was first class. Yes, when that hit my credit card, I was like, what is going on? Who did this? Oh, that was me. Okay. Right. Like I can't, that advice doesn't mean anything to me. Like that that amount of spending. But because my spending is all under control, I just choose to spend more on vacations than the average person would because I prioritize luxury vacations. You don't have to, right? You don't have to. I do. So what are the things you prioritize and how do you plan on allocating your money next year? What are what are the ways you're going to spend your money? And a lot of that, you probably don't want to hear this, but a lot of that is going to require you to look at how you spend your money this year. I think it's really disingenuous for people to tell you, just, just create a budget. Because if I've been spending 50% of my, my budget on eating out, right? I'm not going to go down to 5% because I saw it in an online article. That's not, that's not going to happen. I can't. No one, my spending is not going to make sense to anyone else in the world. It doesn't have to because nobody else in the world is paying these bills. I need you guys to figure out where you want to spend your money in this upcoming year. How did you spend your money last year? Now, Mint is going away at the end of the year or it's switching to something, something. Yada, I, I blocked it out. But Mint is how I, I tracked how I was spending money for a long time. I know a lot of people use, you need a budget. Start tracking how you're spending your money, how you're allocating your money, and then see what you want to do differently, right? Like I said, even if your cocaine budget is down to 50%, maybe that's still too high. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe lower it a little bit. Maybe, you know, you didn't know how much you were spending on churros. Maybe. You only have so much money. Okay, so Aston brings up a good point, and I want to refer. Oh, Abba, you can't try mint now. Mint's going out. Mint's changing. I don't know how it's changing. I think it might just be so. Something's happening with mint. You might be able to try it. They said it was going to stop working in December. So I would maybe do some Googles and figure out what's real, what's not. 
maybe someone in the chat knows because they've been paying attention. I just saw it and I was like, oh, y'all are taking it away from me. Okay, fine. And I let it go. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I want to talk about what Aspen says because it's a good point that we shouldn't walk away from. My issue is not making enough money. My The job market is terrible right now. Freelancing was non-existent. I'm trying to build up my emergency fund. I'm hoping 2024 is better work-wise. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to say the job market was good. I'm not going to say that anything in this world is good because what is going on? The world is a shit show and things are getting more expensive and they're not giving us no more money. Um, but we're not talking about, we're only talking about pieces of the pie right now. That's what I wanted to address here. We're looking at how much money you do have, how much money you do get in. I know you hate that job, girl, and that two hour commute. I know it. But with the amount of money that does come in, how are you allocating it, right? Because there is money. How are you spending it? I'm not saying you're spending I'm not Aspen telling you you're spending it wrong. I'm saying you need to think about how you've been spending money and whether you want to continue spending money the same way. And is that going to get you towards your goals in 2024? I'm not saying making more money is not the exact answer, but- even if you made $5,000 more per month, it's still just a bigger pie. You still got to divide the pie, right? Now, you might be able to divide it differently because some of your expenses are going to be fixed and some are not, right? But you've still got to figure out how to divide the pie. So focusing this year with what we have and what we can control. A lot of this talk is going to be about with ease, right? Like if we want to look at things with ease, a lot of what we're going to have to look at are the things that we can control. A lot of times we can't control whether the amount of money we're making. We might be able to do some things, a little here, a little there, but it's not completely in our control because we live in a capitalist society and we don't have a lot of options in some categories. But how do we decide to divide the pie so that it furthers our goals, the things we want to do? If moving abroad is your goal, right? Maybe there is no extra money for it this year, or maybe if you divide your pie differently, there's a way to do that. And like I said, this is, not, I don't know your money situation. I can't, I can't peek into your wallet. I don't want to. I like to like mind my business about that one. Um, but uh, yeah, like we're just right now in order for this to feel like ease, we've got to focus on the things we can control. And I can't control how much money is coming in. I can control what I do with the money I have. And so I want us to focus on those things, the things we can control for now, because I want us to feel some ease. All right. Mint is moving to credit karma, but you can transfer your history and accounts. There we go. Thank you. All right, Aisha, thanks so much. All right, so <clears throat> how do you allocate your money this year is going to be important. And how do you want to allocate your money next year to get closer to your goals? Um, Aileen says, I like that low spend idea. So I'm going to move this higher on my list. It was lower on the list. I'm going to move it higher right now. Um, for me, we can't, like I said, we can't really control the money coming in. You can tweak some things, do some things, have a sale, do a thing, get a part-time job, whatever. You can tweak some things. But the thing I, I have control, complete control over is how much money I spent. Right? Like I have to pay rent. Or I don't. I could move into move to Meta and live with my mom. But somebody's still going to be paying rent. If I moved in with her, 
I think I could get my rent to like, <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> Woo. Um, okay. So how can I spend less? I'll tell you what I did. We did a no spend challenge in the beginning of 2022 or 2021. I feel like it was 2021. It was a long time ago. And the no spend challenge, we did a January no spend challenge on this channel. I don't think we're going to do that in 2023. Do you guys want to do it in 2023? Let me know if you want to do a no spend challenge. Challenge. Um, but I'll tell you what I did. So 2023, I did the no spend challenge in January. 2021. Yes, I think it's 2021 too. 2022, what I decided to do <clears throat> was write down. I didn't do a no spend challenge in 2022. What I did instead was I created every month, every time I thought about buying something, I wrote it down on the notes app in my phone. And then I waited because I, I didn't allow myself to buy anything in the month I decided I wanted it. Now, if I wanted something, on January 31st, could I buy it on February 1st? Yes, I could. But I couldn't buy it right. I couldn't buy it January 31st, right? So everything I wanted, I had to write down and buy later, except for like food. But if you know how much money I spend on food, that's that's a big except, right? It's a, and vacations and flight, those kind of things. Like, you can just buy them. But like, uh, I didn't do... I, I, wrote, I have a long list. And it, the good thing about that list was I was able to go back and see, I because I, I put a little check mark beside everything once I bought it. I divided it by month and put a little check mark beside a, everything when I bought it. So I was able to see like, oh, I bought that. Like I could look back and be like, I bought all those things. Okay. All right. It's been, it's been a lot, but I was also able to see how much money I saved by not buying the things I thought I wanted. I mean, the list is ridiculous though. Cause you know me like on the list, I was like, I think I want a vintage Rolex, but like not buying a vintage Rolex. I saved how much money? A lot, a lot of money. <laughs> so the list of things, but money I saved is kind of ridiculous. Cause like I need that to begin with. Like if we gonna be ridiculous, let's be ridiculous. Let's be ridiculous together. If you haven't bought the sex machine since August, I guess you don't need it. At least not now. Maybe later, maybe a different kind. Okay. I made a list. I put things on it. I bought it the next month um, if I wanted it still or after. Now, that was educational. I learned a lot about myself. But it also, like, really, more than learning what I needed or what I wanted, it helped me become comfortable with delaying gratification in ways that I hadn't been in a while. You know, with the pandemic, it was I was real, like, load of money. Spend, like, you want to get it. Because who's going to be here tomorrow? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Adelia was was planning for the world to end. I don't know if she, I don't think she still is. I feel like she's making plans further out than she was in 2021. But yeah, I was like, you want it, get it. It's been a hard few years. And then so delaying gratification was really helpful to me. But delaying gratification doesn't necessarily work for me in the sense that like, because I don't have access to a lot of the things I want, when I do have access, I go hog wild. Like the last time I was in Target, I spent $600. The way my suitcase, I got to the airport uh, and I was allowed 70 pounds and I showed up with a suitcase that was 20 pounds and my suitcase after I went to Target was 80 pounds. 
And the lady at the airport was like, girl, is it body parts? Because what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I went to Target. She was like, what? I was like, I don't live in America. I went to Target and I bought everything. Now, it's okay, like, you go to Target, you live in the U.S., you spend $600, you might end up with, like, a piece of furniture or something, right? No, I bought, they're all, like, small things that I'm going to forget I purchased last year. So, so. What I'm doing for 2024 is different than what I did for 2023. It's no longer of a delayed gratification, although there's probably still going to be some of that. What I'm doing now is I've created categories in which I'm not going to purchase anything until I run out of what I need. So in September, when I was in the U.S., I got three different lip oils. Now, what's the difference between a lip oil? There's another one in the bathroom. A uh, difference between a, these are my desk lip oils. What's the difference between a lip oil and a lip gloss? Maybe I don't know, but I like the way they feel. Do I need any more lip stuff? No, I don't. But I see something pretty and I want it. So now, for 2023, what I'm doing to reduce my spending is I've given myself certain categories and I'm not buying anything in that category until I run out. So if I run, I probably have 15 lip glosses here. And you know they're not going to last forever. They're going to go bad eventually, right? So I need to use them or lose them. So until I run out of 15 lip glosses, I cannot buy any more lip glosses or lip oils. Like even if I run out of my favorite, I got to live with, you know, second, third, fifth, 15th favorite until it's done. At least for this year. I'm still going to have lip gloss, some of the same lip gloss sticking around next year. Because where am I going and what am I doing? Y'all know I leave the house like once a month. I put on lip gloss to see you guys and I leave the house once a month. So that's five times a month. Um, I've done something to my face. No more foundation. Uh, no more clothes. Bringing the clothes I had in storage that I decided to keep. Bringing them to Mexico has made my apartment very dense. With clothes and shoes. Uh And so no shoes, no clothes, no, no nothing that I already have enough of. I'm also the kind of person that likes what I like and I buy what I like in bulk. Like I have probably nine of my favorite deodorants because they go on sale that I can find them once a year at the Nordstrom anniversary sale. So I stock up and then I have it all year long. So I don't need to do that. <laughs> I don't need to do that. No hair care, no nothing. Um, oh yeah, you've been getting brands to send you stuff? Aspen, that's awesome. Um, yeah, if a brand wants to send me some stuff, hi, I'll talk about it. But I'm, I can't buy any more stuff because it's, it, okay. It's not, e truly, I'm gonna tell y'all between just us girls sitting here right now, it's not even so much a way to not spend money as it's a way to, limit the amount of things in my home because my home is getting, it's getting to be too much. There's like a lot of stuff. And so bringing more stuff in doesn't make sense. For a while I was, it was like, if I brought one thing in, I had to do, get one thing out, which is another way to, call, to cut down on the clutter. But that's not my ministry. I like my things. I don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> that's, not, that's not why I'm here. So what are you going to do if you would like to cut down on your spending. What are you going to do to cut down on your spending? What is a way that works for you? Um, Aileen says, that's her with Korean skincare. I just realized I have enough repeats to last all year, so I'm refusing to buy any more until I see the bottom of my bin. I have right now in my home at least eight jars of moisturizer and five or six of like face sunscreen. Now, the moisturizer was 
a reason I got a bunch of stuff on sale, blah, 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 buy some favorites, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, this stuff is use or lose. It's not going to last forever. I need to actually use it. So I can't, even if there's something new that I hear is amazing and great and it'll like make my skin turn to glass or gold or whatever. No. Okay. Miss J. Jantel's plan is to only buy stuff when it needs to be replaced, except for around Black Friday. I treat myself to about two to three workouts. I was like, at first I was like, boyfriend, best friend, Black Friday. <laughs> All right. That BF got me for a second. That's a great plan. Two to three workout outfits. I, um, I'm just going to drop this up here for those of y'all that are reading right now. To be fair, where we live in Mexico is very dry. I, re I woke up this morning and realized it's humidifier season again. The last two days I woke up really thirsty. I was like, oh, I need to turn my humidifier. My humidifier is in my living room. I need to put it in my bedroom and turn it on at nights because it's dry. And because, because I live in a drier climate that is like somewhere between warm and cool, but never really cold or really hot, December gets a little chilly. And because I have combination skin, I need moisture. And because I travel to a lot of different places that are really cold or really hot and someplace in between, I need different moisturizers for all of those things and different sunscreens for all of those things. I have inside the house all day, but sitting by the window, moisturizers for hot, for like hot days and for cool days. I have outside in the streets, moisturizers for hot days and cool and uh, moisturizers and sunscreens for hot days and cool days. It depends. It depends on what's going on. My temperature varies. The amount of sun I get varies. I need, but I don't need to buy any more until I'm out because it's too much. Um, Okay, 40, uh, Aisha says, for, from 40 Something Fire, I've been a January no spend pantry challenge for the last past four years. Great post holiday money reset gift cards are allowed, though. That's actually on my list. So I'm going to say it now. Remember to write it down so I actually uh, spend your gift cards before the year is over. Spend your gift cards. Spend your gift cards. Spend your gift cards. Create a plan to spend your gift cards. Know when you're going to spend them. If you haven't spent them before the year is over, know that you're saving one for like January or whatever. Because you know half them things run out of money if you hold on to them too long. Spend your gift cards. That's part of our plan. I have a gift certificate for a massage that I've been holding on to since 20, late 2022 because it's for a hotel and I wanted to have a day. We're going to get a massage at a hotel. They usually let you use their, all their amenities. You can be in the spa all day and this and that and boop, boop, boop and bump, bump, bump and pampered and blah, blah, bloop and foot pool and blah, blah, blah. But I ended up going to that hotel, to a local hotel. I ended up going to a, that local hotel um, really fancy, really expensive. The reason, one of the reasons I was saving it uh, was because... I know I'm probably not going to stay at that hotel with those prices. I was like, let me save it for like a day. I feel like splurgy. Well, I went this week to talk about something else, a work thing. Um, and I found out when you get a massage, you simply get the massage and go. You don't get to hang out. You don't get to use the pool. I don't even think they have a pool. You don't get to be in the steam room. You get the massage and you go. I was like, how dare you? So use your gift cards. Use your gift cards, please. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What are the ways you're going to spend less next year if that's part of your goal? I don't think it needs to be. I don't think you need to spend less. I will never be the one to tell you to spend less money. Like if you want more money, I will tell you to make more money. <laughs> but if that is frustrating <clears throat> or if it's not feeling, you're not feeling abundant, if you're not feeling like ease, what are the ways that you can do the things which you can control? And one of those is typically how much money you spent, right? How are you going to allocate the parts of your pie? 
I'm going to spend less money on things I don't need. I need luxury vacations. I need really nice meals. Um, and so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to still spend money on that. I don't know that I'm going to be spending less money. I'm going to be spending on things in a different way. Um, sometimes this person, I just don't get it. It's not about spending less. It's about spending in a way that aligns with your goals and values. My goals and values are to own everything. So like, how do I spend less money and align with that? I want, like, I'm a maximalist. I want the things. I want the clothes. I want the shoes. I want the bigger apartment for the clothes and the shoes. I value things. What do we do? What do we do here? Sometimes people say things and you just got to be like, mm -hmm, girl, that's for you. It's not for me. It's not for me. I can't spend money with away with my goals and values. I can't. I cannot be in alignment with what I value because I value owning things. What are we going to do? I have to have other things. I have to like make, I have to choose things that keep me corralled in a way, right? I have, I have to, I have to self-impose boundaries because if I don't, right? Like I don't want less things. I want a bigger apartment. But I realize that when I say those words, they sound crazy. I want a bigger apartment so I can own more things. It sounds crazy, especially in the city when like six people should already be living in my apartment, <laughs> not just one. So I got, I got to corral myself or I'll go crazy. She, she not, you know, I'm going to block her in a minute. She's not helping. All right. Next on the money list is I hate you. Okay. All right. Uh, glass half full is uh, upping her massage budget in 2024. She's downsizing by eating out. Fast food budget, good for my health too. The big, Okay, the problem with the bigger apartment is that I can't, it's unlikely that I'll get what I want with this. Like I want my exact apartment, but at a room. Like knock down the wall between my place and the place next to me. Because I love my view. I like where I am, all that stuff. And it's hard to get. I don't like moving. Call her haters. Haters. Oh, Miss J. Dontella, I want to hear about how Thanksgiving went. You just, it clicked for me right now when you said you're living in SoCal. Tell me how did Thanksgiving go with a catered meal? We have questions. Um, making your own juices, doing your own hair, and doing it with nail extensions, which is the hardest to take out of my budget after a year. I don't miss it. All right. Auntie Lou says she'll never own as much stuff as she did in her New York City apartment. I literally ran away from it. Sorry, superintendent, for having to clean it up. You had to go. All right. <laughs> Thanksgiving was an experience. I try to be nosy without being nosy, without putting all the business in the streets, but I still want to know. All right. Um, back to money. How much? Okay, so... I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money until now, <laughs> until this point. How much money did you invest and save this year and how can you make it more next year? If you don't know how much money you invested or you saved, tighten up. 
at least know, right? Like even if it's not the number you wanted it to be, you should at least know. Tighten up. I, I'm not going. I don't tell y'all what to do a lot. That's not this this kind of channel. It's just not that. But I'm gonna tell y'all if you do not know how much money you have saved and invested this year, tighten up. It's not going to get better until you track it and make a plan. Tighten up. What are you doing? I'm not saying that you should have a goal and stress yourself out to hit that goal. I'm saying you should know what happened. Right? You should know what happened. What? How much money did you save? How much money did you invest? Every month, first day of every month, and by the first, I mean sometime between the first and the 10th, if I forget. It's always somewhere there. I'm like, did I do this yet? Somewhere around the time I pay rent. I always remember, I have a spreadsheet and every month I write in, I, in the beginning of the year, I decided what my financial goals were. Like where I wanted to have money allocated between different accounts. And every month I write down how much money is in that account. I go, I look it up, I go to that account, I write down how much money is in each account and I can see how far away I am from my annual goal every month. Do I need to move things? Do I need to change things? Do I need to, okay, let me tell y'all. I had a real, I have a Fidelity cash management account, which is like a, it's like a checking account basically. Um, for my purposes, I can use it. It works like the Charles Schwab works for me. I can use it abroad. I, without paying ATM fees, they rebate ATM fees. There might be some details I don't know about because I don't read all that fine print. Judge me later. Um, but it's working the same. I feel the need to say this everywhere I can say it now because I've been talking about Charles Schwab for a long time. Charles Schwab was paying me like 0.4% interest and Fidelity is paying 2.6 something. And when I look at 2.6 times 0.4, I was like, it don't make sense to be putting a bunch of money in Charles Schwab when I should be putting a bunch of money in, if I'm going to put a bunch of money in either of those accounts, why would it be the Schwab over the Fidelity when I'm getting like pennies in interest and Fidelity? from uh, Charles Schwab and dollars from Fidelity. So my finance, my goals switched maybe last month or two months, how much money I want to have in each account switched because we got to adjust. Charles Schwab ain't getting no more of my money. I mean, I'll keep money. It's an emergency account for me basically now. So I'll keep money in it so that I can get into it. If ever, anything ever happens, if I lose my Fidelity card, et cetera. But I was regularly putting money in there before, like, like an uh, uh, automatic transfer. Cut that off, baby. 2.69 for Fidelity Cash Management. Uh, Nell said, I thought Fidelity had foreign transactions fees. I don't use it as a debit card. I, I only use it as an ATM card. I don't use it to buy anything, but I did not think they had foreign transaction fees. But you could be right. I just don't use it like that, so I don't know. I only use it as an ATM card. And they rebate my ATM fees. Um, I do have more savings investing goals for 24, so I'm going to do a tally. So yes, so I know how much money I have, how I've progressed each month towards my goals. Now, I really don't track it month over month. I track it cumulatively for the year. But like I have an idea of what I've saved and what I've invested You should too. If you don't, how's it going to change? If you don't have anything to compare it to. All right. Um, next on the list about money is we're talking about ease. 
who do you want to donate money to before this year is over and how much? I'm not saying go to your bank, get $10,000 and give it to PETA. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in each of our cities, there's an organization you believe in. Somewhere in the world, there's someone whose mission you would like to support. Maybe it's an organization, maybe it's a person, right? Who knows? But we're really talking about organizations here, right? Um, how much money can you give them in December? Not necessarily for a tax write-off, but so that you can say in 2023, I donated this money, right? And in 2024, I'm going to do more, more, right? A lot of times when we think about like doing things for organizations, um, we can come up with a lot of excuses, right? But if no one's judging and no one's watching, what can you do? What can you do, right? Trucker at says American Heart Association. That's going to resonate with you. It's not going to resonate with other people. Um, but yeah, pick an organization. Pick pick something. I like small and local. So in San Francisco, there there still is a. Um, I'm gonna get this name wrong. So let me hit the Google's real quick. That's not it. It was a black Shakespeare company, uh, African-American Shakespeare company. This is it. And for years when I was living there, I would slide them some dollars. Cause like, okay, right? They got the kids out there performing. Okay, I like it. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's not something that most people have ever heard of, but it was something that resonated with me, right? So what what is a thing that you can do? What is an organization that you can support? Um in a way that makes you feel good, right? Now I'm saying for me, I'm always short on time. I am not a person who, like I used to volunteer regularly at certain places, especially when I live in Ohio. Now, where am I gonna be tomorrow? I don't know. I can do like one-off volunteering, but I can't do consistent volunteering. What's easier for me is giving money to places that I love, right? Maybe you can, um, Donate your time. Remember when Stephanie was talking about not starting nonprofits and that a better way is to give money to people, make more money and give more to people? Your time would likely be better spent making more money for yourself so you have more money to give. I'm not going to tell you not to volunteer, ever. I like to volunteer cash. So yeah, what are you gotta look quiet? Y'all gotta look quiet in the chat. Tell me who you would like to give money to in December. Kay Stewart did donate to a local theater company. 
and PBS, something I've always wanted to do and accomplish. I, like I said, it could be, they're not going to turn down $20. They're not. Start somewhere and do something and get in the habit of doing it, right? Get in the habit of donating to organizations that you support, missions that you feel good about, people that are good stewards of money. Um, And start small. Start with a number that feels good to you today and then increase it next year when you're making more money because you will be. I believe. Jelana donated money to a local, uh, to a Palestinian organization in March. Yay. In March. Okay. Uh, does it come in green? Says my grandmother. I feel you. Genesis says, I'll do hair for free. Makes me and them feel good. <laughs> um, I support an organization that helps school kids in Africa. I always donate extra in December. Yes. Autism awareness. I've given both to the Epilepsy Foundation and No Child Hungry. Anya Juan Risco donated to the Tuskegee Airmen Association. Non-funded girls soccer club in the hood. Yes, Cassandra. Okay. Maybe Planned Parenthood. I started donating to my company high school, my old high school since my company matches it. Yes. Okay, let's talk about this. Some of y'all are leaving money on the table because your company will match things and your company will pay for things. A woman who just joined from Brown to Bliss joined because her company knows that she's leaving after a certain date. She told them, I'm not going to be here after this date. So you should help me transition. <laughs> and this is my transition. I want to take this class as a transition plan. And they paid for it. Her company paid for her to be in from around the bliss. Woo! Your company will match things, right? If you're not investing in whatever your company retirement plan is set up, you're probably leaving money on the table because there might, I mean, there might be a match. Find out where your company will what your company will pay for. Joy donates to our local pet rescue centers. Monica says, Gleaner, Meals on Wheels and Gleaner's Food Bank. Yes. St. Jude, my local YWCA. YMCA. Yes. Pretty Particular says, also in some cases, your company will donate to associations as a memorial in lieu of flowers. Yes, make them spend that duck. Get them to spend money. Okay, so what are you donating to this year? How much? Pick a number, right? A lot of places have a website. You just go online, drop a little change with a credit. Well, you can do it on your credit card. And it doesn't show up as a cash advance like some other cash stuff would do, would happen. Um, and go live a good life, right? Feel good about the thing you've done with your money, right? We make this money to do the things, whatever things you're doing, right? And do you feel good about them? Like a lot of people are tithing to their church. And I'm not going to criticize that. I'm not a church girl. Y'all know this. It's okay. But a lot of times when you give money like that, you may not have a say in how the money is spent. I'm, I'm going to leave that there. You may not have a say in how the money is spent. And if you donate to an organization, you may not have a say in how that money is spent either. You may have some visibility. They file those reports, what are, the, what are the reports they file? Something, 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 something that you can find online. Anyhow, you can see how they spend their money. 
But if it's a mission you believe in, like with the Shakespeare company, I don't care how you spend it. At the end of the day, the goal is to get black actors and actresses, and especially children on stage. Sure. Okay. I feel good. They do with Cinderella right now. Death of a Salesman, something called Pipeline, The Merchant of Venice. Hello. Nine ninety for nonprofit spending. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Jelana Watson says, Red Crescent and Mecca have programs in Gaza that you can donate directly to. It doesn't, I know that for a lot of us, it never feels like we have enough money, right? And I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but I'm going to say this, right? Like if you can find five, 10, 15, 20 dollars, a hundred, whatever the number is that feels good to you and you give it away, whether that's to an, indiv an individual you're not related to, right? For some good to be done in the world that doesn't have direct, I feel, okay, so I feel like there's a lot of good that we can do directly. And like we get credit for, like emotional credit for that, probably with someone or whatever. But to give money away where there's no way of it really like, the people on stage at Shakespeare, little girls who now have costumes, for the Merchant of Venice, right? Who wouldn't have costumes, wouldn't have the left shoe <laughs> if I didn't donate that money, right? Like they don't know it's me, but it feels good to know that I helped, right? I didn't buy a whole costume, but I helped, right? And it's not a, something that like, like I said, can be traced back. I mean, of course they're records, whatever, but like there's no direct link. Giving where there's no direct link is I think what I want to say. Is there a really powerful thing that can lead to more abundance, right? Like when you give with an open hand and no strings attached, it can definitely lead to more abundance when you're freer with your money. Money is energy. To get it, you got to give it, right? So you got to decide where you're giving it. To get money, you have to give money. It is energy. It's going to move in a circle, possibly even a spiral. Let that be an outward spiral getting larger and not an inward spiral getting smaller, right? Give with an open hand. Let's see what happens. All right. I think we're going to leave money. And we're going to go to another topic. Oh. We doing things the easy way. The easy way. Conditions that create unnecessary stress? No. Giving shouldn't be stressful for you or who you give it to, right? If it requires conditions, are you giving or are you buying? Right? Think about that. Who are you going to donate to? And how are you going to donate more next year? All right. What do you want to learn next year? What is something that you've been putting off learning that you want a topic you want to learn next year? Every year I say I want to be a better editor, like a better video editor. And every year I'm like, what did I learn? Nothing. What did I, tr like, what did I take a class? No. So how, did I work with an editor? To no. I'm going to write this down this year. Every year, for the past three years, I've said I want to be a, vi a better video editor. 
what have I, what have I done to learn how to be a video, better video editor? I've watched maybe like two videos on YouTube. Did they make me a better video editor? No, no. No. What are the ways that you can, what are the things you want to learn and how can you invest in learning them? And maybe that investment is money. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time and money. I mean, it's going to be time. If you're learning, it's going to be time. You need to spend some time. But maybe it's not going to take as much money as you think. But how, what is your educational plan for the thing you want to learn this year? I need to take a class because I was like, I'm going to watch all these videos on YouTube. First of all, I didn't watch the videos. And second of all, it would be so much quicker if I actually took a class, right? So I put better video editor and then take a class, take a video editing class. There has to be some out there that are good. What do you want to learn in, what did you want to learn in 2023 that you haven't learned yet? That which rolled over into 2024, learn it and then find something else, right? Learn something else. Get you a twofer in 2024. Learn the thing you want to learn in 2023 and then learn something else in 2024. You have a whole year. You have a whole year. There's a whole lot of learning in Spanish. I, I know we said that like Duolingo isn't the best way to learn, but I've at least been spending time doing Duolingo every day. I'm number one in my league by a lot today. I have for the week 8,248 XP and the person underneath me has 3,040. I'm beating her by 5,200. Because when I feel competition on my heels, I, I didn't know I could be number one. I was number one last week in my league. This is such a stupid thing to even talk about. I was number one last week in my league and I didn't even think it was possible. And when I realized, oh, I could do that, this week, I was like, well, I'm going to do it again. And next week, I'm going to do it again. Because, girl, what? It takes me like 45 minutes a day. I should be doing other things. I have a whole lot of deadlines I need to be working on right now. But, yeah, they've gamified Duolingo, <laughs> Auntie Lou. And that's honestly, like, it. I did not think it would work for me. I thought the gamification part of it was going to be annoying. But the gamification part of Duolingo has me like... Oh, I get double points for the next 15 minutes. Well, I guess I'm not going to stop now. I guess I'm going to keep going for the other 15 minutes so I can get double the points so I can beat these people. Because you know what? I'm the best. Now, what is the best? We're not learning the same thing. We're not of the same skill. We're not. There's no real competition. But I have the most points. Uh. Lenora's up to 111 consecutive days on Duolingo. Mom is like 600 and something. I'm at 49 today, but I'm number one in my league. So let that be a lesson. I don't know what the lesson is, but we doing it. What do you want to learn? So I'm, it's not the best way to learn Spanish. And I have books and I talk to people all the time in the streets because I'd be outside occasionally. Um, the other day I had, I have some projects I need to do like outside the other day I left my, I was supposed to leave my house at 9.30, but I canceled an appointment. This is Friday. I had a, I had a 10 o'clock appointment, I had to leave at 9.30. We had to cancel that. So I left the house at um, 11. I got back at 7.30. I was walking the entire time except for a one hour meeting. And that one hour, like one hour I had lunch and a meeting at the same time. I walked nonstop through the city for six and a half hours. I got home and the next day I needed to go walk again. And I was like, I can't leave. I was like, I cannot, I cannot stand up. All I can do today is lay on the couch. I don't know. I don't know wh wh where we were going with this story, but we, you needed to hear it. Tired. Um, any hoodle, what do you want to learn next year? What is the thing and what is your plan? 
right? Duolingo isn't my plan for learning Spanish, but it's something that I can do every day that help. I know it helps me, right? Like I know, but it's not the most efficient way. Probably a language immersion would be good for me, but <clears throat> I'm immersed, baby. I live here. <laughs> like, woo. A language school would probably be helpful, but I'm gonna do what I can right now with what I got. And that's Duolingo every day. All right. Uh, Mr. J. John Tell says, for those wanting to learn Spanish, there are tons of podcasts that are really good. Spanish Obsessed for Beginners, Duolingo Stories, and Language Tutor 101 also has a YouTube channel all free. Yes. All right. Oh, Laddams or L. Adams? I don't know. It says American Sign Language. I used to know quite a bit. I don't know. I But like goals to work with pregnant women in the deaf community. That's really awesome. That's really awesome. Um, I'm learn something, learn something new next year, have a plan, whatever the thing was you wanted to learn. And if you didn't want to learn anything in 2023, so you don't have anything to roll over for 2024, pick something to learn in 2024. And this doesn't have to be a thing that's going to make you money right? This doesn't have to be a thing that's related to work. It can be something for fun. Maybe you want to learn how to watercolor. Maybe you want to learn how to do pottery. I love pottery classes. I haven't taken one in a long time, but one of our local friends has taken one and I'm sneaking into her next class, right? I, whatever things you want to learn. Brittany Joy wants to learn how to knit. Now she's one of them creatives. So I feel like that's kind of work related, but it can be. It can be work-related, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be work-related. It can be anything you want, right? Anything you want. Whatever things you want to learn. Whatever things you want to learn just for fun, for no reason. Pilates, girl. Every time I go to Pilates class, I'm like, why do you hate me? What have I done to you? Did I kick your child? Did I steal from your grandma? What are you, what's happening? Oh, I'm paying for this. I volunteered for this. Rude. Rude. All right. So come up with a learning plan for yourself. What do you want to learn and what is your plan for learning it? Like I said, my plan for learning how to edit videos better was to watch videos on YouTube. No, that is not a plan that works for me. I need actually somebody sitting down and being like, get it together. I need homework. I need a sign. I, the way I learn, I need someone to hold me accountable. It's not going to be on, on the YouTubes because I'm not holding myself accountable because if a choice is to watch this editing video and learn how to do something or eat some plantain chips and watch a movie, y'all know what I'm going to do. Y'all know what I'm going to do. So let's not pretend. All right. Grab your pen. Grab your piece of paper. What did you do this year that was fun? What are the ways that you had fun? And how can you bring more of them into 2024? Did you go for a hike and really enjoy it? Never thought you'd like hiking as love and done it since then? I know at least one of you. At least one of you was like... I forgot how much I liked hiking until I did it. Or I didn't know how much I liked hiking until I did it. But like hiking isn't very accessible. So I'm not going to do, I don't have any plans to do it again. How can you come up with a plan to take a hike? Right? What are the things you do for fun? Was it hanging out with your friends? How can you be more intentional about coming up with plans to see your friends. I know it's really easy for that to fall off your calendar when we all have a thousand things to do. How can you be more intentional about it, right? Is that we spend a weekend together once a quarter? Is that, um, I got distracted because that's actually a distinct thing on my list is how can you see your friends more? But we don't do these together, I guess. How can you, no, this is a separate one. 
Is there a friend you really want to see that you haven't seen or you want to see more of? How can you be more intentional about the relationships in your life, the friendships in your life? What are the ways you can spend more time with the people who bring joy to you, who really make you happy, who fill your life with ease, right? That's number nine on this list. Um, how do you see the friend that you haven't seen that you really want to see? Or a friend you haven't seen in a while? That was number nine. Let's go back to number eight. The things you do for fun. So eight and nine are the people. Eight is the thing. What are the things you do for fun that you haven't done and forget to do? I There are quite a lot of them. And I, I actually started making a list a couple of years ago. I need to find that list of things where I'm like, if I'm feeling kind of blah, these are things I like to do that are fun. I like ice skating. It's like, it's weird, right? Like, but I, there's an ice skating rink in town. There's a temporary ice skating rink in town, which I need to go to soon at the Four Seasons. But there's also a permanent ice skating rink at uh, Buena Vista Mall that I've never been to. I've been here for years. I haven't been ice skating. There's a rink that's open every day and I haven't been in years. So like I write down fun things I like to do. And every once in a while, I just pick something off a list and do it. Go do something fun, right? Like make yourself a list of the things that you enjoy. And when you are in a crap week or you are feel bored, right? Because a lot of times I feel bored and what do I do? I nap, I eat, I watch TV. When I could be getting on the bus that takes me directly to the mall, directly to the mall and going ice skating there. And then getting on the bus that takes me directly in front of my home. I could be doing that, but I'm not, right? What are the things that you could do that would create a little bit more joy in your life, right? It's not something you want to do. I don't want to ice skate every day. I don't want to ice skate every week. I don't want to ice skate every month, but like once a year could be fun, right? Make a list of the things that you like to do occasionally and have that list handy for when you're bored, when you need some inspiration, when you have an off day with nothing to do. Because it's easy to do the same things over and over and over again, right? Because you don't remember you don't remember the things, which is why I said make a list. Make a list. All right. See, y'all are terrible people. Her soul fit, I'm gonna tell you why you're a teller person right now. It's not personal. Our plantain chips even sweet. They have salty types and they have sweet types. So yes, to answer your question, the types I eat with movies are sweet. I'm trying to eat some chocolate cookies or cinnamon rolls with that movie. I can't eat gluten. I cannot eat baked goods and I love baked goods. I love, my freezer is full of baked goods because I bought them even though I shouldn't have. And my body was like, no, we really mean it. You can't eat this. And so I froze them all. Why am I going to, why? Why are they in the freezer if I can't eat? I love baked goods. Part of what I'm doing right now, the project I'm working on, is I have to walk around to different restaurants and different things and check them out for coffee shops and like check them out for a travel guide. But like, you know how many pastry shops there are in Mexico City? My God, today. They opened a la durie. There is a la durie. The French macaron shop is now open in Polanco. Huge, a huge, a huge la durie cafe is open in Polanco. I didn't know. I'm not eating gluten so much. It didn't even hit my radar. I saw it the other day like. There are some gluten-free bakeries in here. The most popular ones are trash. Tea rash. Tea rash. Okay, so the problem with Mexico City, I'm gonna tell you, be honest with y'all. Like gluten-free flour sounds good, 
better. Remember, we're at high altitude. <laughs> Nothing bakes regular here. <laughs> Nothing bakes regular here. And so to have something be baked well to begin with, even with regular flour, and then adding in gluten-free, child. I don't think I've ever had a, a good gluten-free snack in town, ever. And I try, I try. Mm -mm. Between like, it's, it's we're, we're a mile and a half above sea level. <laughs> Things don't bake. <laughs> Things don't bake well here. And there aren't as many gluten-free bakeries as you would think. A lot of the, I went to a bakery every day. I was like, do you have anything gluten-free? And they were like, the door is right there. <laughs> like they were like, what do you, <laughs> woo. They said, no, ma'am, please, we're wasting our time. And like I said, the gluten-free bakeries that I know of in town, Adelia hit me up one day and she was like, look at this menu. Does that say the, the oatmeal is 285 pesos? Um, let me tell you what that is real quick. 285 pesos is $16. This place was charging $16.50 for oatmeal. But the worst part about it is it was a gluten-free bakery that had it on their menu. And the gluten-free is tr trash, tea rash, tea trash. The gluten-free bakery is, tr so their oatmeal is probably garbage too. $16 for oatmeal? One of the most popular gluten-free bakeries in town. I walked a mile to get it one day, got there and I was like, I have to throw this whole thing away. Like it's not, I can't even eat it. I've eaten good gluten-free things in other places. This is not, the, this is not that city. I know y'all mean well. I know y'all mean well. I don't know if that was an upcharge for the oatmeal being, I don't think, I don't think the price was the upcharge. I think the price was just the price for being gluten-free. Like they just charge $16 for oatmeal. At a place that prides itself on be, being a gluten-free bakery and the baked goods are nonsense. So, you know, the oatmeal probably is too. I was like, get out of there, girl, get out of there, get out of there. They ain't doing nothing. Imagine. Imagine what the baked goods cost at a place where the oatmeal is 16 is almost $17. <laughs> Woo. Y'all are really trying. I trust me. I have not found. Listen, if you have been in Mexico City and you have found a really good gluten-free bakery, let me know. But y'all are suggesting, all who are not here are suggesting a lot of things and I appreciate it, but I've been here for years. Trust me. We, we, don't, we just don't have it. They love, they love their breads here. Love. And the non-bready stuff, like the fake breads, it's real bread. I know it's just not gluten, whatever. It's not, it's not hitting. It's not hitting on nothing. But if you live here and you found the perfect gluten-free bakery that makes good stuff, let me know. Let me know. Um, all right. How did we get to this? I don't know. How did we get to gluten-free baked goods? List of things you want to do for fun. Is there a friend you really want to see? I don't know. Walmart will only have baked goods that come like there's a fresh bakery and they'll have like they have fresh. I won't be getting baked goods at Walmart. I don't know how to.
I won't. It's hard. Unless you've been to a Walmart here, it's hard to explain. The first time I went to a Walmart here, there was like a meat table with big, this isn't at everyone. Don't let this scare you. Don't let this scare you away. But the first time I went to Walmart, there was a table with those big metal like baking tins or roasting tins full of like raw meat just on the table. And I was like, some of them were covered, some of them were not. Hi, Nicole. Bye, Nicole. See you next time. It was a pleasure having you in community today. All right. Um, We talk about things you do for fun. We talk about the people you want to see. Make a list. Make it happen. Make it happen. I always, okay, so years ago, my best friend had been married maybe like three years of a time. And her and her husband did everything together. And like, I like him, so it's fine. But like, when do we get to spend some girl time? And I did this Reiki session. And the lady was like, write down what you really want, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'd really like to spend more time with my best friend. And she was like... Okay, well then when we're done, like we wrote, like drew a picture. She had me like drawing pictures and blah, blah, blah. At the end, she was like, oh, you know, tell me about it. I told her about it. And she was like, well, what are you going to do to see your best friend? I was like, okay, I'm going to ask her if we can take a solo trip together. And we did. I think that's the only trip she's taken without her husband in like the 17 decades they've been married. But like, I just, I realized I wanted it in that Reiki session. I wrote it, I drew it on paper and then I asked and it happened. But if I hadn't asked about it, it wouldn't have happened. Right? It wouldn't have happened. Oh, y'all are so cute. Uh, Iodel says cornmeal is gluten free. I am sensitive to corn as well. So I'm not supposed to eat, I, I cheat with corn because I live in Mexico. <laughs> And not eating tacos is not an option, but I have to limit the, I can't eat corn baked goods. That's too much. A, one taco with meat and other stuff I can eat, but like actual, like cornbread. <laughs> My body reacts to it the same way it reacts to gluten. It's not good at all. Ooh. Mm -mm. Oh, Nisha, this is, I'm gonna call it cute. I'm going to call it cute. They sell, they sell meat in the bank lobby on Fridays. Life abroad. Life abroad. You're going to see some stuff you weren't expecting to see. Take it as adventure. Mark it all adventure. All right. <clears throat> Next on the list. Uh, what are the things you've been doing this year that you don't want to do? Put it on the list. Write it down. Put it in the chat. Whatever things you're doing this year, but you don't want to do anymore. You may not be able to think about it now, but you'll think about it before the year is over. You'll think about it probably before the day is over. <laughs> Shauna said work. <laughs> yes, not being able to eat flour and corn are tragedies. Both? Like not one or the... The other day I was outside and my eye was starting to get irritated. And I wanted to eat. There's a pizza place I want to go to. And I was like, I can go to this pizza place, but I might not be able to see tomorrow. Is it? No, <laughs> no. Go have some meat somewhere. <sighs> go have some meat. Go sit down somewhere. I had some duck. It was good. Was there flour in the sauce that was over the duck? Possible. I don't know, but it wasn't eating a pizza crust. And even then it would have been a thin crust pizza because I know I can't do thick crust. That'd take me down. That would take me, especially when my eye was already irritated, down. Who did I piss off in a past life? I have weak genes. <laughs> I blame that directly on my daddy. I have weak genes. A specific gene I have leads to this issue that I have. Thanks, Dan. Um, I I treat I cheat with tacos, but not frequently because 
the reason I know how I found out, but I had a corn sensitivity is I was in Mexico for three weeks eating whatever I wanted. And then one day I had my eye gets inflamed, turns really red and I can't see and like any kind of light coming in really irritates it. Um, and my doctor said it was the worst he'd ever seen. I've had two doctors tell me that my, my, my eye irritation, two different times, two different times in my life is the worst I've ever seen in their entire practice. I'm special. Look at me. I'm number one. Um, and both of those times, they gave me injections in my eye. I had it a third time too, but it wasn't that bad that time. Just a little injection. Just a little pop that down, that pink part in there. We just put a little needle in there and pop, pop, pop. A couple places. That's all. I'm going to tape your eye shut for like a week. That's all. That's what happens when I eat corn and gluten. So I don't eat corn and gluten. I cheat every once in a while, but not regularly. Because child. <laughs> Mm, okay, so what are we talking about? We're talking about what you don't want to do. Ah, Brittany Joy said, building somebody else's business. Listen, in a capitalist society, most of the work any of us do is just making rich people richer. It's all we do. It's all we do. It's all we do. We make rich people richer. God, I want out. <laughs> I want out. But they keep digging the hole deeper. They keep making it harder to get out. Um, mm. uh, Shauna said work. So what I was going to say is, what do you not want to do anymore? And how can you outsource it? But how can we outsource work, Shonda? I mean, you're going to school. So you might be doing less work. I don't know. We need to talk about this. We need to catch up. Miss Callie says work for low pay. It's a whole bunch of works in here. I feel it. I feel it. Not allowing people to bring negative energy into my space. You don't just ignore them. When people get like, when, people, when I realize people are bringing negative energy into my space, I just start to ignore them. Oh, I didn't see that comment. And yes, it's passive and probably having a conversation would be more effective. But those people who are like energy vampires don't understand those conversations, right? There's no way you're going to have a conversation with them. That's not going to lead to them not having a converse, conversation with someone else about you. They're going to turn you, they're going to bring this conversation to someone else and be an energy vampire for somebody else. I didn't, oh, I didn't see Um, you want to eat less sugar and watch less news. You can do that. Mm -mm. Yes, we do need to talk, dinner and drinks. Mm, if you're around next week, this week, come, this week is great. I have a deadline on Friday, so this week is insane. But the week after, if you're around, definitely. All right. What are the things you don't want to do anymore? How can you outsource them? I outsourced cleaning my apartment to my cleaning lady maybe two and a half years ago. If I've been here for three years, maybe maybe a little bit closer to three years, closer to a solid three years. Um, and I'm never going back. that little lady would probably have to push me down and spit in my face for her to not work here anymore. Like she would have to be like, <laughs> I stole your kidney overnight. And I would probably ask her, well, did you clean up afterwards? And when will you be coming back? <laughs> like, what, what are we talking about? Because cleaning is not my ministry. Okay, Monique said, uh, Pan Gabriel in La Condesa. I'm going to put this on my map. I don't go to La Condesa often because you probably already watch. No, Monique, why? I don't go there often, but I'm going to put it on the map. Oh, there's multiple locations. Ah. All right, there's one in Masarik, which is closer to me. I 
I have saved it on my want to go list. I was just over there yesterday. Not that far down, but close, close, close. Okay, thank you. Jelana says she might outsource doing my hair. I used to love braiding my own hair and trying new styles, but it's too much time. I want to outsource the cleaning and my hair. I was talking to Stephanie the other day about outsourcing hair um, in a way that feels good, right? I think a lot of what we, a lot of what's missing in the outsourcing of hair, the people who do not outsource their hair, is that relationship and the experience with the hairdresser doesn't always feel good. Or we think like, oh, it's something I can easily do myself. Both Stephanie and I have really thick hair. <laughs> and so we both have hairdressers who complain about our hair. Like I'm in your chair and you're telling me how horrible my hair is. Can I just put a texturizer in it? No, 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 you can't. That's not what I came for. I came to get it pressed. So how about we do that? So like a lot of times, like finding a therapist, like Adelia wants to outsource food. She needs someone else to be responsible for feeding her. Um. L. Adams or Laddams, I don't know. I would like to outsource house cleaning, but have trust issues with strangers in the house. A lot of times it's just going to be um, fi like finding the right fit, right? Like my the way I found my cleaning person was I got referral. I got a referral from someone. And the place is nicer than mine. <laughs> and she worked for them for years. If you trust her in your place and she was there for years and you wholeheartedly, okay, sure. If she wasn't, like I have, I don't trust people easily, but if she was not taking stuff out of your house, she probably not gonna take nothing out of mine. There's nothing that you have it, that I have in my home, but you didn't have in your home. And if you worked with her for six years, okay. So for me, it's just like finding ways to find the right fit and doing the work. And it can be a lot of work, finding someone to cook for you, which Delia needs, and uh, finding someone to do your hair, which both Stephanie and I need, um, and finding a cleaning person. A lot of it is doing that initial work. And then once that initial work is over, life is a lot better. Life is a lot easier, right? Life can be a lot easier once you get to that initial work. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that, that initial work isn't hard. It is. But you know. If you don't do it, it doesn't get done, right? Like I know so many people saying you want to out some things you want to outsource have been on your list for more than six months. But you haven't taken the step because it feels like that first leap is hard. You got to take the leap or it's never going to happen, right? Like your perfect cleaning lady isn't going to fall on your lap. Mine kind of fell in line because the person she was working for was leaving and she had some available days and I snatched one up. I should have snatched two up because now I keep saying like, when, when will you come work for me more days? When will you fire those other families and come work for me more days? When is that? Okay. Malaysia wants a bookshelf tour. I've done it before. Um, I'll post photos in my, in the community, Malaysia, 1911. Post photos on the community about the books on my shelf. All right. You want to outsource your work from anywhere job search? Someone will do it for you. You can do it. Someone will, I mean, don't outsource. As long as people are like outsourcing job searches to AI, I wouldn't do that. But someone, someone in this, channel watching right now would help you with your job search. But a lot of times we don't ask for what we want. 
There's a VA right now, Igami, that would do this for you. And while it might feel like a lot of pay, like sometimes our, one of the hurdles can be, I got to pay for that. I got to pay, for, but it's an investment in a work from anywhere job, which is going to make you happier in the long term. All right. Charles said I has her, says her laundry has been outsourced for three years. See, that's a trust thing for me. Okay. So for as long as I can remember, I've been buying my own clothes because my mama don't. If I wanted, I had to pay for them. And then she would borrow the clothes that I paid for with my money. And then she would like throw a wool sweater in the washer and dryer them and hand it back to me like this. So I have some internal trauma around other people washing my clothes. Does that mean that I shouldn't be able to outsource it? No, but I wash my own drawers. <laughs> I probably need therapy and a laundry service. But I'm gonna live with this. Actually, I have a, I got a washer, a washer dryer unit in one combo in my apartment, so I can easily do it myself. Um, instead of taking it somewhere, uh, because mm -mm. I don't trust nobody with my clothes. But I know what it comes from. I know I I can point directly to what that comes from. I know. What are the things you're holding on to and do you, but you should be letting go of and do you know why you're holding on to them? Do you know why? All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. One second to grab this. Malaysia's request for a bookshelf tour or I will forget. Uh, free black lady. Uh, yeah, you, it's house cleaning for me. I used to have it back in the US. I must pick it back up in Mexico. Yeah. Labor is one of the least expensive things here. So if there's something that you want to outsource, you can probably find someone trustworthy to do it for a good price. All right. I think we kind of addressed this earlier, but I'm still going to say this again. What are the things you really wanted to do this year and didn't do? Do you still want them? If you do, how is next year's plan going to be different than this year's plan? I <clears throat> told myself at the beginning of this year, <clears throat> I'm going all in on YouTube. I am going all in on YouTube. I'm going to look up something real quick if it'll work for me. Let me see. Bum, 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 bum. So I can tell you, I, no, this is not what I want. Tube's always playing with me. Switch accounts. My other channel, Rashida Doe, got monetized. That was good. Not monetized enough to actually have paid me any money this year because I don't pay you until you hit your first $100 and I've monetized for months and I have my $100 in pay. But I'm also not making, I'm doing co-working. We do co-working there every Tuesday and Thursday. We just don't do it regularly. Um, but what I'm trying to tell you, my computer's been tripping. Whenever I try to go to YouTube, analytics, this is what I want to find out. Content, nope. Audience, nope. I'm trying to tell you guys one thing and my thing hates me. It just hates me. I don't know what's going on. Okay, let's see if I can do this here. Analytics. Bum, 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 bum. I'm trying to tell you how many subscribers I gained this year. Because this was going to be my year on YouTube. And I was going all in and yada, yada, who to what all that stuff. But I think I may have 365. I gained 4,000 subscribers this year, in a year. 
That's what I thought it was. So going all in on YouTube isn't exactly what happened. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't, like in my mind, it's what I was doing, but in actuality, it wasn't what I was doing. I was consistent. But it, I didn't, I hit my goal of consistency, but I didn't hit my goal of like doubling my YouTube subscribers. Is that still important to me? Yes and no, right? I think a more important goal for me is to really engage with my audience in a way that I might not have been fully doing this year, right? Um, and so that was something that was important to me in 2023. I didn't even get close to what I had in mind, but is that still my plan for next year? I have a lot of plans. They're all written down in a notebook. Will I remember this notebook next year? Will I pay attention to this notebook? These are questions. I'm allowed to have questions. You're allowed to have questions. I don't know. I don't know. These are things, right? What are the things that you wanted to do this year and didn't do? Do you still want to do them? Or are they things that you can let go? Sorry, I just got irritated by something on YouTube, which is not related. That's the thing, when I open a window, my brain does all the things. All the things. Four thousand is an accomplishment. I'm not saying it isn't. But my goal was like, you know, an extra thirty thousand. It's a little short. Um, but did I do the work to get to that goal? No, I didn't. Is it okay? It's okay. It's okay. Things happen. Um, this year, I cruised more this year than I have any other year. I really put myself in cruise control and was like, if it's fun, I'm doing it. If it's work, leave me alone, right? Like I took off most of March, April, and May. And then a couple other months this year. I've been on vacation at least six months out of this year. So like, you know, I had plans. And then I live my life. So for you too, what are the things that you thought you wanted to do this year? Are they still important enough to you to roll them over for next year? If not, how do you say goodbye to them? Afternoon, Glamazzini. How do you say goodbye to them? What if, do you, you know, write them down? Do you write that you changed your mind? Do you burn it with fire? What are the things you do to let that go? I'm curious. Because I think a lot, I had a, quite a few, I need to look at my goals for this year again um, and decide what I wanted to roll over. I said I in October, I just made new goals for next year, which is a way to do it. But I think I should also look back at last year's goals and see how I feel about them. So um, that's what's on my list. Whatever things, come on, somebody tell me, tell me something that was on your list that kind of fell off. And that you're not that you're not gonna roll over. Tell me this. I want to know what you had on your goal list for 2023 that you didn't hit, and you're also not gonna you're not going to roll over into 2024. Oh, Shonda no longer wants a relationship. I cannot bring myself to give energy to one more idiot dude. Next year is all mine. In France, you know, you know what's gonna happen. She's gonna go to Paris, and they're gonna be on her like flies. She gonna come back with three men. And they won't be idiots. I feel it. I feel it coming. I do. Mm, I do. Okay, Malaysia is not rolling over business idea. It's time to let it go. Okay. 
That's okay. You let it go, it'll create space and there'll be more room for something else. Okay. Auntie Lou didn't bother to repair her desktop and I'm guessing now you're not going to since you moved or moving. What are your other things that you're giving up? You had onto your 2023 goals <clears throat> and you're willing to release without any guilt, without any fear, without any hesitation as we roll into 2024. Uh, Isan one says, weight loss will not be on my list for 2024 because I lost weight and got scared. All right now. All right. Know yourself. Let go of stuff you want to let go of. Igami says, letting go of goals is new for me. I love this. I tend to hold on tight and pretend they're all coming forward with me. Not rolling over is a great idea. Yes, I'm full of good ideas. Let some stuff go. Choose one thing, at least one thing, right? That's been on your vision board for a few years or something and just release it. Release it to the universe. If it's meant to happen, it'll happen. But like, there's probably something on your goal list, on your vision board, on however you plan your life, there's probably something that does not feel like ease. Can you release it? Maybe just for now right? It's a stressful time in the world. Maybe you release some stressful stuff now and pick them back up later. People are dying. People are always dying because capitalism, white supremacy, Western nations. All right. Bridget Story says she's letting go of extra side houses because in 2023 it was stress trying to do the most. Yeah. Like the idea of more money is great, but how much are you killing yourself trying to make more money? Can you just be a better steward of the money you actually already have? Now, if I have a choice, I'm going to tell y'all every time, if, if there's a, an equal choice between making more money or spending less money, I'm going to tell y'all to make more money if it's an equal choice. But if it's not an equal choice, if you have control over one and one is stress and it feels it's not hard to do and one is stressing you out, let go of the stress. Jamila is letting go of the need to have an own apartment. And it's going to spend the money on traveling. Yes. Good for you. Auntie Lou, where are you? I picked up that you're in Mexico, but I don't know where in Mexico you are. All right. Raven C says, I plan to let go of doing everything for everyone else. I plan to choose to do one thing at a time in 2024. I'll prioritize my time. All right. Aileen Brown is letting go of a soft life and black excellence myths. I'm not sure soft life is a myth. I think soft life as we see it portrayed most frequently is a lie. But I, don't know that it's, I think you can have a soft life, right? I think a soft life is possible but it's frequently rocky getting to there, right? Like it's not smooth getting to the soft life a lot of times. Um, but when you get there, I think it, I, I think I have a soft life. I generally have a soft life. Can I make soft life content and give it to you every day? No, because that's work. And y'all know how I feel about work. Who gonna do this editing? Who gonna film this? I got to do six different shots of myself pouring coffee. What if I just want to drink the coffee? I am so sorry. <laughs> Wait, what are we doing? What's happening? Yes, the soft life we're sold is consumerism in different packages. A lot of times, yeah. The life isn't as soft. A lot of times the soft life we're sold isn't as soft 
as it looks. And that's the lie, right? But I think you can have a you can have a life that feels soft, a life that feels easy. It's just unlikely to look like what we're told a soft life should look like. I'm not rolling out of bed in a completely cream room and stretching and going to get my coffee and looking out the window and thinking about, but my life is so soft, right? If I did that, my life would still be soft. But if I have to film doing that, it's a little, for me, it's a little harder. For someone else, that might still be a soft life. <laughs> Not the sad beige baby room. Listen, some people love that beige room. I just, obviously, I'm not a beige room girly. Um, real soft life doesn't require a Gucci teacup and a Tiffany spoon. It doesn't. But if that's what a soft life is for you, listen, I am one to, I will criticize consumerism for the point of consumerism. I'm, I will criticize consumerism if it's, Main goal is to look away to other people. Keep up with the Joneses. But if you love stirring your coffee with a Tiffany spoon and it's not for the internet, good for you. Go get that spoon. I don't care. Right? I, I do not care. Right? Some people really like that stuff. And I don't feel a way about that personally. Unless you got a Tiffany spoon because you think it would look good in your stories and you bought it on your credit card, but you can't pay off this month. Then, you know, that feels less soft. It feels less soft to me and the life I want. Um, I'm planning taking a cruise next year. And when I'm on the cruise, it's going to be a soft life. I intentionally planned a cruise that ain't really stopping anywhere. So there's nothing to do but be on the boat for days. But planning it is not soft. Why I got to email y'all because this stuff ain't working. Why? Why? When I'm planning the cruise, is it, oh, we've never had this error happen anywhere before. How will you fix it? But, right, like there's a lot of stuff that goes into having what looks like a soft life to other people that is hard. So I could feel myself on the boat living this soft life without talking about the fact that like every time I got to pay for this, I'm like, you did this to me, Stephanie. Actually, I did it to her. That's not the point. Who, whose idea? Why y'all want so much money? Why y'all want so much money? It's just a boat. Don't y'all owe me a boat cruise to wherever I want to go, if we be in real? Aren't I owed an expedition on a boat for free to take me anywhere I want to go, if we be in real? I got to pay for this. It's ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, like, I think it's, it is possible to have a soft life, but the soft life comes with rocky bits, right? The soft life, part of it was uh, when Stephanie and I both planned to be perfectly transparent. When uh, Stephanie and I planned this, to take this cruise, we knew how much money we were going to make from Exodus Summit. Except we knew exactly wrong and we ain't make the money we thought we were going to make in 2023. So every time I have to pay for this, I'm like, like, yes, I can pay for it. I'm not starving, right? Like I, it's not, I would have just canceled if I couldn't pay for it, right? I can pay for it, but I don't like the fact that I can feel when I paid for it, when I didn't think I was going to feel when I paid for it, because I thought I was going to have a little bit more money. That's that's right. Like it's not as it's not as easy. It's not as easeful to plan the trip because the money I thought I was going to get, I didn't get. 
the trip will be, the cruise itself will be full of ease. And the planning part hasn't been hard. I got a concierge to help plan everything. Like, it's not hard, right? But like, what should mean other people have been having no problem booking, but our account has an issue and you can't fix it because you don't know how to fix it because it's never happened before. Is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm black? I haven't gone there yet. She got like two more days <laughs> before I hit her with that. What's the problem and how do we solve it? How come I can't book my excursions, but everybody else can book when I'm paid in full? Is it because... Right? Like, it's going to be a soft life experience when we get on the boat. Before then, I got to work. I got to talk to people. I got to pay for things. The only way to pay is to get on the phone with somebody. Y'all know how to use my phone for that, for talking. The only way to pay, I can't pay online. I have to actually speak to someone. In the year of our Lord, 2023, I have to speak to someone to pay? Who? Any hoodle. All that to say, I think a soft life is possible. It's rarely going to look like it looks in snippets you see online. I don't deal with people who stress me out. And that right there creates an incredible amount of softness for me. An incredible amount of softness. I don't have to speak to it. If I don't like you, I'll talk to you. Because why, why would I? What do we have to do together if I don't like you? Listen, last year, everyone I didn't like talking to you when we were planning the Marrakesh meetup, I outsourced to Francis. <laughs> I, listen, I can't talk to him no more. You got to do it. I'm about to cuss this man out. I need you to take over. Like, I'm not, I won't, I won't be coming to any more meetings with that person. Thank you. It's your job. Listen, if I don't like you, I'll talk to you. That will dramatically increase, uh, it will dramatically increase the amount of uh, softness in your life when you do that. Radically. Let's get there. Mm -mm. Let's get there. Okay, so how are we, we're, we're our a my goal for next year. I don't know what your goal is. My goal is more softness, more ease, more relaxation, less stress. Because things do stress me out sometimes. Exodus summit season. Is stressful. Stressful. We have a couple of stressful months. When we start planning it, it's pretty easy. When we start looking for speakers to buy, like booking speakers, that gets a little stressful because it's usually around the time we start selling as well. Like it's a little bit before the time we start selling. And then like the actual happening. Those are stressful seasons. And they're all like two weeks, three weeks. Uh... But yeah, I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to be stressed for like maybe six weeks out of the year. And the rest of the time, I'm not going to do nothing, right? Like my my soft life does not mean I'm not stressed any of the time. It means that I know when I'm going to be stressed. Child, I know when y'all going to be in my inbox talking crazy to me. I know. I know. One of these days, I'm going to outsource my inbox and y'all won't be able to talk to me at all anymore. Not, not, not the nice people. <laughs> the ones who come in my inbox talking crazy. What, what is, why are you here? What, what? No. All right. If you want to send a comment to me that includes this laughing emoji, know that I can block you. Hmm? 
Are y'all going to put a meetup date in the Exodus Facebook community? I don't know who y'all is, but I'm not. Yeah, so Stephanie and I are doing two trips that we know of next year, probably more. <laughs> uh, one is the cruise and one is Fiji for her birthday. I wasn't able to watch yesterday because I was doing from burnout to bliss, burnout to bliss group coaching, which you can get at from burnout to bliss.co. Um, so I couldn't attend her live session yesterday. Um, I don't know what she told y'all, but I will be in Fiji. Stephanie will be in Fiji. She loves to invite people to do things. It's a tear of joy emoji. Y'all play too much. Let me tell you the thing about Stephanie. She likes to invite people to places to do nothing. So if y'all come, don't expect anything more than nothing. I know she's told you, but y'all might think she's playing. And I want you to be very clear. She is not playing. Y'all not going to do nothing in Fiji, which is what I'm going for. I'm going for the do nothing experience. Thank you. Ain't going to be no tours. Ain't going to be no. I don't know what she said. Some of you guys were with her for her birthday in 2021 when we were in 2022, when we were in Cancun for the meetup. She ate cake by the pool. That was her birthday. She ate cake by the pool. So if y'all are coming to Fiji, good luck. If you expect anything more than nothing. And the reason she ate cake by the pool was because I ordered cake. <laughs> I ordered cake. I ordered a cake for her. Because for me, it's not a birthday unless there's cake. There better be cake. I'm telling y'all, if y'all see me on my birthday and y'all don't have cake in your hands, you're messing up. It's not a birthday unless it's cake. Even if you don't want, even if you don't eat cake, and I'm talking about regular gluten-full cake, I'll risk the death, right? If I show up to your party and there's no cake, I'm looking at you sideways. I'm looking at you sideways if you show up to the party. If I show up and there's no cake, don't do that. A wedding and there's no cake? Damn your love. I ain't come for this. I came for the cake. Rude. Anyway, there was cake because I ordered cake. Otherwise, she would have just been sitting at the pool. <laughs> there was cake at the pool. I ordered cake. Okay. So a cake made of cupcakes is lovely too. Cheesecake? No. No. Cheesecake is a nice dessert. It is not a cake. Why do y'all? It's time for me to get off the internet. Y'all play too much. Y'all play too much. Adelia, I was trying to be nice for her once and I picked up her cake from her delivery person and then I was in, in an enclosed space with this cake that was drizzled down with peanut butter. I like peanut butter. I do not like peanut butter with things. I like peanut butter with like apples, not in baked goods. Duh. So I'm carrying this cake and there's these men in this elevator. We're like, oh, that cake looks so good. And I'm trying to like keep the gag that it was so strong. I was like, um. so I'm here with this cake. I can't even eat none. I'm in an elevator risking my life, risking my internal organs, stuck inside an enclosed space as we go up 38 floors with this cake. And then when it comes for dessert time, I can't even eat none. Yes, damn your love. Damn your birthday. If there's no cake for me to eat, why am I here? Why? Am I? I didn't come because I love your love. I came because at the end of the night, there's cake. <sighs> mm, I went to a birthday party that had pie. Fortunately, I like pie, but some were disappointed. I don't eat cooked fruit. So most pie is a no for me. Most pie, same gag reflex. Same like, get it away from me. Where's the cake? Like y'all ain't even get like six cupcakes? No. For those of us with good taste buds? <sighs> Any hoodle. Uh, I think we've done it. Cook fruit is weird. Cook fruit is not supposed to happen like that. Cook fruit ain't. 
And then y'all be eating canned. Some of the cooked stuff has canned stuff in it. Jesus, save us all. I just. Fruit pies are trash. I will. I will die on this hill. Fruit pies are trash. I love y'all. Goodbye, Kimberly. It is difficult. It is both difficult and easy to make friendships or develop close relationships when you move abroad based on who you are. If you are someone who wants to be in the streets every day and making friends, like actively, you you have to actively try to make friends. At least for a little while. And then you'll make friends. And if you're an introvert, you might be too many friends after a while. If you're an extrovert, it'll never be enough. Right? Your who you are at home is just gonna be a reflection of who you are when you move. Apple crisp? Hell. Jail. Somewhere else, but out of my comment section with this BS. Jam. Jam. Ew. Ew. I love a pie with ice creams. Why are y'all? Okay. Beloveds, y'all are the best. Fruit pie is trash. I want to continue loving you all, so I'm going to get out of here. Key lime pie, because they don't really have alignment. Like, it's not like a lot. Yes, I'll eat key Aspen, we good now. We good. Key lime pie is not trash, because it's not real fruit in there, right? Like, it's it's all, it's like really a, a lime cheesecake is what it is. Fruit pies are trash. Have a nice day. Bye.